So what we're going to do is we take 60,000 and we divide it by BPM. Simple, right? What's up everybody, I'm Alex at generalguybuild.com. Today we're going to talk about how to calculate your time in respect to your BPM. One might ask, why do you need it? I never needed it for the past 10 years, so why do I need it now? Well, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples and you will probably find a lot of use to do it. So before we get started, make sure you like, you subscribe, you do all that shit, you know, hit the bell button, write a nice comment or make just a thumbs up in the comments just to feed the fucking algorithm. I shouldn't say fucking, but probably the video's already 30 seconds, so I'm not gonna get flagged by YouTube. Alright, so let's keep that whole intro thing short, let's get right into Ableton. So okay, let me give you a couple of examples of when you might need it and what I'm actually talking about. So we got here a clap, which is actually from the free Hardstyle Shots Volume 1 sample pack. It's free, so you guys should really check it out and really get your copy. Uh, there's a link right in the description, like the first thing you see here on the video. So get it. Here we got a simple clap playing quarter notes we might want to have some reverb. So we got a Valhalla reverb on our sand, we boost the uh, sand level. We might would like to have like more like a bouncy reverb. So then the easy thing to do is raise up the pre-delay on the Valhalla. And you already hear it starts grooving a little bit. But a lot of reverbs don't really have a function that you can sync the pre-delay. Actually, the first reverb I came across which has that function was the RP verb 2 from Rob Papen. Also, Logic's internal chroma verb has a synced pre delay as well as a synced decay time. And also, the new hybrid reverb from Ableton has a synced pre delay, which is only working for the convolution reverb. For the algorithmic reverb, you still need to calculate it. We definitely can see a trend that more and more plugin developers really start adding a sync feature to the reverbs, but you know, there are some great reverbs which don't have it. A very easy thing to mimic your synced pre delay is just using a, an actual delay up front. Let's go back to Valhalla, let's reduce the pre delay to zero. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the delay before the Valhalla, 100% wet, no feedback. This is very important because you want that sound to repeat only once. You don't want it to repeat all the time. So I'm gonna bypass the Valhalla. And now you hear it. And if we just play one note, you hear it's only one repetition of that sound. So this is basically the same thing. So when we engage the Valhalla, we got that same effect. But sometimes it can be a little bit hideous. Sometimes you want also just to insert your uh, Valhalla directly on your channel. So you want to calculate the delay time uh, in regards to your actual BPM. In Ableton, again, if you're an Ableton user, it's super easy. You just select what time you want to know. Let's say we want to know one beat. On the left bottom corner, it really says to you, duration 375. If you are not an Ableton user, probably your DAW has some sort of uh, similar function which shows you the actual duration in milliseconds or seconds in regards to the BPM. But if you don't really know how to do that, there is a very simple calculation which you can use. To find out the time in regards to your BPM, there's a simple calculation. You take the number 60,000. For those of you who been stoned in school, who missed school, who never went to school, or who are just simply dumb as fuck. Let me break it down to you. A thousand milliseconds is one second, okay? A thousand milliseconds is one second. How many seconds are in a minute? That's right, it's not 100, it's 60. If we take 60 seconds, which is like one minute, right? We multiply it by a thousand. That's right, you got one minute and 60,000. And we're talking about beats per minute. That's what BPM stands for. So that means like, you know, if you have 160 BPM, it's like you're playing 160 beats in a minute. So what we're gonna do is we take 60,000 and we divide it by BPM. Simple, right? We are on 160 right now. 
and we got 375 milliseconds for one beat. Now one might say, but Alex, I don't want to know about a beat, I want to know about an eighth note. Let me break it down to you, a beat is a quarter note. In this case, an eighth note, you guessed it, it's half. So we divide it by two again, and boom, we got a quarter note. 160 BPM, a quarter note is 187.5. But Alex, I want to know the length of a sixteenth note. Well, we got a quarter note, guess what? Divided by two, boom, you got your sixteenth note. So super easy stuff. And now we can uh, multiply it by two, so we are back on our eighth note, it's 187.5. So here we got the same clap and we toss the Valhalla directly on the channel. So we said our calculation is 187.5. So we can put in the pre-delay time here, 187.5. And now we got a perfectly timed pre-delay to an eighth note. So, but it doesn't need to stop there. You can say you want your delay being on an eighth note, but being exactly a quarter note long, so it kind of washes out over, or you just say it should be uh, an eighth note. So you make the actual decay time, again, 187, boom. That way your reverb ends right here. This can really make a big fucking difference in your production and uh, like in the overall feel of your track and give like your track also some life and some groove. It doesn't need to stop there. Another real life example, for instance, you want to make some sort of like a modern gated type of kick with like distorted reverb tails and shit like that. So we got here a super clean kick. By the way, this kick is from the Ultimate Hardstyle Kick Sample Pack, so check it out. Man, I'm pushing my shit today, that's crazy. Okay, here we got an exact copy of it. Just a little bit lower, I'm gonna talk to you about that. And we do the same thing, we load up on Valhalla with the pre-delay time to an eighth note. In order to have it sound a little bit darker, we filter out some of the high end before we get into it. Maybe boost some low end. Great. And we give that whole thing some distortion. Obviously you can overdo it as much as you want, why not? And now if we play them together... I'm aware this is like not the best sounding shit, whatever, but if you understand a little bit from production, the technique is important, what you make out of it, that's already your thing. But uh, it's still a very cool technique to, you know, make like more timed stuff. We have another real time example, again, from the hardstyle kick pack, all that stuff. So I still have the same kick. Great. And I added the tail. Now we got like some sort of a cheap reverse bass sound and we want to add a talk. Great, but something is still missing. So let's just add again the same reverb. So in this example, we want maybe a little bit less of that reverb. You get again this little percussive thing coming in on the eighth note just from the reverb. And this can also sound very interesting freeze that whole thing or bounce it in place or render it everybody calls it different and you can even reverse that little reverb and then you get also some other really cool effects and we can maybe blend them a little bit maybe it's like that so our talk sounds like that now and all just through a little bit of timing let's get to some other real life examples Nowadays with uh, the appearance of Serum, where you have like synced LFOs which you can use as envelopes, uh, a lot of things got way easier, but if you use other synthesizers like Silent and stuff like that and you want kind of more like timed uh, envelopes, you can use that as well. Here we got like a simple sound from my upcoming sound set, I made it! Serum Raw Style Volume 2, it's coming soon, so keep your eyes open. I'm very proud about this one, so it's gonna be out very, very soon, so definitely keep your eyes open. So here we got this little preset. This sounds like that. 
Let's simplify it. Let's take out the frequency modulation. So the cool thing about the upcoming pre sound set is I made a macro for each sound so you can simply turn off uh, your reverbs and delays. Can make a little bit less or turn them completely off. I find it incredibly easy to work with. So let's say you have a delay which has a specific tone which you really like uh, but it doesn't have a sync button. This happens quite often with any type of guitar stuff. Even if you maybe have like some pedal with a guitar delay, maybe you use some outboard shit. So again, since we calculated our time with that little formula, you know, 60,000 divided by BPM and you got a quarter note, we can use the same thing. So we have here a guitar rig with this twin delay. Let's make it like almost 50%. So we hear the delay is completely off. Now with our brand new knowledge, we know it's about 375. So let's do one a little bit above, one a little bit uh, below. Then we got a nice stereo feel. Great, we make an eighth note. So it was 175 point something. So let's do it like that. Those are also real life applications which can be very helpful. Uh, anyway, here's another example. We got like a kick part with a screech. Let's open that screech. So this screech starts a little bit up front, starts on a 16th note. Let's put it on the 8th note before. So in this particular example, I didn't use uh, the LFOs as an envelope. I used LFO2 to move the filter as well as uh, a little bit of the distortion or the, the filter on the distortion. And we might want to time that. So here we got a macro setup, so we're gonna just remove it for now, just for the example. And we might want to say like, yeah, let's um, make it like opening all the way up till here. You remember we started at the 8th note. In order to make that happen, we need to add the time of the 8th note, which is 187.5 to the quarter note by 2, which is 375. So we're gonna do it now. So we click 375 plus 187.5. And this is kind of a dotted quarter note. If you don't know what dotted means, it's basically your quarter note plus the half of that time. Basically a quarter note and an eighth note. That's what we actually got here. So it's 562.5 milliseconds. We are pretty close here, but let's do it. 562. So now we can hear it. And yeah, the filter is completely open at this point, at the second downbeat. And we also have envelope 3, which is doing a pitch modulation. So it's kind of pitching up from like a couple of octaves below, pitching all the way up to the actual root note. And we might want to extend that one as well. So it was pretty right on time, actually. But we could even double that. The only thing we need to do is we need to multiply this by 2. So we're going to do it. And we got one second and 125 milliseconds. I remind you, a thousand milliseconds is one second. And now you will hear that the pitch modulation stops here. From here we should have a steady pitch. This is kind of stuff where some tracks feel better than others and you don't really know why, you know, like a regular listener on a festival, he doesn't know why he likes a track. Sometimes like those little tricks where like, you know, everything is timed and everything kind of makes sense and everything changes also in rhythm with like what's, what else is going on. Sometimes it just gives you a little bit of a better experience. So play around with that shit. Okay, let's come to another, and this is this this will be a little bit brain fuck, but bear with me, it's gonna be worth it. So here we got an acid line. And let's say to this acid line we want to add some chorus. Uh, just for the demonstrational purposes, let's raise up the amount, let's raise up uh, the dry wet, so it's all like 100% chorus. <laughs> So we would also like to time that chorus to our BPM. 
but we don't have a sync button and here it shows hertz not milliseconds in order for you to understand what hertz means it's one cycle per second so one hertz is one cycle per second 10 hertz are 10 cycles and so on so to calculate the hertz that's kind of a little bit of a mind fuck but we're gonna get into that so we open up our calculator and so we're not gonna calculate anything towards uh, milliseconds and shit like that we are mostly interested in quarter notes half notes and so on and so forth so in this example we're gonna calculate we have 160 bpm so we type in 160 bpm and we divide it by 60 and that means we got one beat because we talk about beats per minute we got like 2.66 hertz or 2.7 hertz in order for one quarter note 2.7 so with that chorus obviously it sounds a little bit more confusing we want maybe to have like a full bar instead of one beat what we're gonna do is we got like in a bar we got four beats so we calculate the time by four uh, we divide it by four i'm sorry and we got 0 0.66 so that means like our chorus then repeats in oh let's say 0 0.67 that means our chorus it's kind of the cycles repeat only every bar it sounds more timed right we can even go into serum we got here our little step sequencer which uh modulates like a bunch of shit and it's timed to one bar so we calculated one bar is 0.66 so we can turn off the bpm click on 0.667 let's do it like that still not gonna work 100 percent but you can hear it's exactly the same as one bar and if we go back to one beat so again multiply by four because we divide our bars into four beats so we got to multiply the time by four so it's 2.6666 now it's gonna be four times faster and again you know in synthesizers especially with that stuff you have it already there you can already sync everything but sometimes like you have choruses you have phasers uh, you have a lot of effects which use like which don't have any type of uh, sync option or even like some auto filters and stuff like that so it's also very helpful to uh, be able to calculate that all right guys this is it for this video I hope everything was clear, understandable. I hope you might already found some real-time uh, applications to that, which might be useful for you in the future. Yeah, if you find out more uh, real-life applications which make sense, please let me know in the comments. I will be very grateful for that. Uh, if it was interesting for you and you think like you will step up your game as a producer, please let me know. And if you simply enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it, also let me know. I'm very happy about all the comments. I read them all the time. So no comment is getting lost. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are in need for sounds and samples, head over to generalgeibel.com. You find a lot of paid shit, very useful, and you also find some free shit, which wouldn't make sense not to get it because it's fucking free so thank you very much for your attention i see you next time bye bye